guys hope you all doing well in this time period of life it's really tough but uh this time i have a tutorial for you i hope to make it small it has to do with um, the signal from boston studio via usb being so low as you guys can see here on the screen i have it for the grand channel everything is basically at noon sort of and i have no effect to engage whatsoever I'm recording in Logic and I have my amp bypass. I mean, it's um, in bypass mode. The thing is, I'm monitoring through um, Logic. So what I did here, I'm going to show you Logic for a second. It's already recording. Going to Preferences. As you guys can see here, Katana is my input device. You can do this in any DAW, okay? Except maybe for um, Audacity, there's a lot of problems with that. Uh, and my output device is my sound card, in this case Universal Audio Thunderbolt sound card. The buffer size, I think I already mentioned that um, you have to get it pretty low because if you have it high, you're going to have latency when you're playing, okay? So I'm monitoring through my computer and my studio speakers, which are uh, Yamaha HAS7, okay? The Katana is that quiet. Of course, this is not the ideal situation if you want to shape your tone because you're not listening through the katana. But this is only for recording. Okay, so I choose the, the, almost the, the lowest value possible here. Not too much because you might have some, um, the computer might struggle to handle it. But 128 samples is more than enough. You just increase this when you're ready to mix, when you have lots of plugins and stuff like that. So I'm going to shut this down. And now I have this in my track, okay, I have record enabled, the track is recording already. I can play a chord and you guys can see the waveform on the screen. And I'm, I'm getting a pretty, a pretty good signal, although it's USB, but you can improve this, okay. And I have this little button here, engage, this means I'm listening to the signal via my studio monitors and the katana, like I said, is that quiet okay so let's go into tone studio also let me just show you something uh, in logic I see I, I know there's a lot of DAWs where you have to create uh, specifically a mono track or a, or a stereo track in this case in logic it's, it's very different you, you just create an audio track and then in these two circles here I'm not gonna click now if it's just one circle it will be mono if it's two circles, it will be stereo. I want it stereo now for the effects on the katana. So if I select delay, I can have a stereo delay, ping pong, chorus, stereo chorus, and reverb, etc. Okay? So going back to Tone Studio, I'm going to shape my tone from here, okay? Without hearing the katana. And I'm looking to get some cool blue stone, okay? I'm using my PRS Bernie Marsden and it's um, a step down all right so uh, first off I want to decrease the gain and you'll notice that when I decrease the gain here okay the waveform that will appear in logic will be smaller so one thing that I've learned is if you have lots of distortion not volume if you have lots of distortion and of course a little more volume the waveform via USB will be much higher than normal okay so that's what you want to do okay if you have like a clean sound it will be very hard for you to get to get a proper waveform so let's go for a clean sound first so I just can show you what I mean by this okay so right now I have pretty much every knob at noon noon and uh, if I play a chord if I was listening to the katana it will be loud enough doesn't matter if it's five half watt, 50 watt or 100 watt uh, it doesn't work like that, okay? okay one thing to consider is the fact that I have my sound card very loud so I can hear properly via my studio monitors and that's the problem um, I have my panel here for the sound card and this is already pretty loud. As you guys can see here, this wheel, it's already pretty loud. So usually I'll put it like this. You guys will not will not, not notice in the video, but it's very low for me to listen. So what I do is 
So I'm gonna stop recording right now so I can insert the plugin. Okay, I'm going into all the effects. There's a bunch of plugins to choose from. And I'm going to this plugin section here that comes with Logic. And I'm going to um, Utility Gain. In this case, it's stereo because it's stereo track. And now I'm going to increase around 10 decibels, which is a lot. But believe me, you will need it. Okay? All right. So, that being said, I can start recording again in Logic by pressing R. Now, this plugin won't affect the recorded signal. It only, it only affects the way you listen, your monitoring, okay? So let's go into the crunch mall. Immediately you will see the waveform will be higher. A little bit higher, okay? And I want to stick with this channel. I want to reduce the gain and I'm going to lose some USB signal. So I'm going to increase the volume here. I'm going to take some mids, a little bit. I'm going to take some treble as well and some bass, okay? I'm going to stay on the neck pickup for now. In this situation, you can use your DAW to your advantage, like I did in the video before, where you use effects built in into your DAW. So you can have stereo delays, reverb chords, whatever you want. You're not limited to three or four effects, okay? But let's use effects here in Boston Studio. Let's check out which reverb is turned on. It's a whole reverb, let's see how it sounds. A little too bright to my taste. Let's check out the room verb. I'm gonna go with this one, but I'm gonna high cut it much more. So see, this is just a sense of space. I'm gonna put the effect level at 50 to give you the idea that the amp is somehow in a bigger room, okay? You don't have to use so much reverb, like 2.0 or 1.9 will be enough. But you always have that feeling that the amp is placed in a room. Okay? Now I'm gonna use some delay and I'm gonna check out the delay I'm using. Tape echo, I check out. I love this delay, but this one is not in stereo, okay? Let's go into the EQ section and see how it's done. Okay, the EQ is totally off because of the previous video that I've done. What I said, you just use your, your panel. But I'm going to turn it on right now because I want to decide some, some things here. I want to shape some stuff here. This is a bug from Tone Studio in the, in the version 4 of the MK1. Whenever you touch one of these buttons, it goes straight into nothing, okay? And then you move your page, like I'm going to now nice suppress and then here, and it's low again, it's back to, to zero, although I have all the bass. So this is really annoying, annoying and already male boss and they're working on it, okay? So what I want to do is put this everything at noon, including level, if I can. I'm going to the second page and my eye cut is always normally around five, all right? This gives you much more of a um, tube amp style, style response. Now, I'm going to my delay and I'm probably going to choose a stereo delay. So right now we have ping pong. Funny thing is when you choose stereo delay, and I think you guys can, can hear it in a recording, um, what happens is the fact that when you play also on the waveform in the screen, the first the, the sound of your guitar will come on the left speaker 
and the delay will come on the right speaker. I don't know why this happens, I have no clue. So the other one I think was pan, and this way it comes on both speakers at the same time if I'm not mistaken, let's check it out. Play time is too fast, let me put this a little bit slower, reduce the level, I cut it a little bit more, around 4K. Alright, I'm gonna decrease the gain because I wanna go with the booster. I'm gonna choose first the clean, clean boost because the clean boost is very good for this because it's the only pedal you have here inside Tone Studio and probably in real life that doesn't color your tone and I don't want to color it in any way I just wanted to add some more boost effect level not so much bottom end I don't need that also the noise suppressor will be important I'm gonna put it as low as possible almost disengaged because I want the notes to ring okay so increase a little bit the gain on the amp Okay, so this first part of the video is to show you how you can do to get a better level if you're monitoring through your PC or Mac and get a great tone via your CD monitors or headphones using an external sound card. So right now I'm going to stop recording in Logic and I'm going to try to make a different thing which is enhance the already recorded tone. Okay guys, so here I have my recorded tones, what I just did before. Let me increase this to maximum. Let's listen to just to this part that I've just recorded. It's in stereo, so you're gonna hear the delays in stereo. If you guys can see here on the level, it's pretty high, so it's pretty cool. Uh, that has to be because of the distortion that I had, not exactly if it was a clean, a clean uh, channel, it'll have much, much less signal. But this plugin is increasing the tone, so I'm going to disengage it to, so you guys can hear the difference in volume. And although it's very acceptable for a mixing situation, if you're monitoring just for yourself, you want to put it higher, okay? So another tip, uh, using a regular EQ inside your DAW, the EQ in Logic is this one I'm going to bring right now. You can see the waveform of what, what we just recorded. So if you can see guys here, the waveform is pretty much like a tube amp. It cuts very, very near 5K. There's a bump here, 500K, uh, deep here around 1K. There's a lot of tube amps with a very, very similar graphic uh, interpretation. But you can see, although uh, when it's playing it doesn't show there's a curve here which means in terms of mixing purposes this is not good so because you have a lot of low end and rumble and I can show you guys that in a second I'm just gonna put a low pass filter for it around around what around 150 probably and you can hear just the low end take a listen Very subtle, but it's there. You need proper monitor, studio monitors or speakers or headphones to listen to that, not on your laptop. And that's what I don't want, because in my recordings, when I record like five, six, seven, eight guitars, doesn't matter, I don't want that to build up, although it's not very, you cannot really listen to it, it's there and in the end you'll have lots of low end and all the space you had for the kick and bass will be gone so we're going to be use a high pass filter around the same frequency around 85 or even more since this is a solo you can go higher 120 okay 
There's no rhythm here. Okay, you, you already are eliminating these kind of waves that 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 uh, waves, not waves. The signal here on the spectrum, you can go a little bit higher. This way you have a much more clear signal in your recordings, right? Now there's a bunch of things you can do to your to your signal inside your DAW. And I want to ask you if you guys want um, a few more videos because this is getting too long already. A few more videos specifically how to dial some tones, how to sculpt, I mean some tones inside your, your DAW. Please leave me a comment below. I'll be more than glad to tell you how I do it for my recordings, stacking up different guitars uh, from you know, from super clean to heavy metal to modern metal, anything. So hope you guys enjoy this. This is supposed to be small, but it's a long video already. And uh, stay tuned for more. See you on the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.